Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Dmitry Mrzhensky. I am the author of Decoded Frontend Channel, the channel about advanced web development. And today we're gonna continue to talk about a Rex.js library and namely, we will have a look at such a thing called schedulers. Schedulers are being used as an argument for many uh, Rx.js operators and I decided that it might be interesting for you also to know what is that the scheduler. We are not using this so often, but it is very important to know what, what the responsibility of the thing and where we could apply it. So stay tuned and let's get started. All right, schedulers. So let's try to figure out what is that. I'm currently on the official RxJS uh, documentation and there is a page about schedulers and this is a description of what is scheduler is, yeah? The schedule controls when subscription starts and when notifications are delivered and so on and so forth. But what is interesting for me is this line. A scheduler lets you define in which execution context will an observable deliver notifications to its observer. And here, the first thing uh, which is interesting for me is execution context. What is that? And in order to understand what is execution context, let's jump to the application I prepared for this video. And here you can see method called run async. And inside this method, I have a uh, bunch of code lines uh, like console log request animation frame set timeout result uh, promise resolve so and so on and now i'm going to try to run uh, this method and you try to pause this video and try to uh, guess in which order will be executed all this stuff okay so uh, if you are ready, I'm going to cli click this button and here we see the output and let's compare it. So the first output is from console log, which is fine. Yeah, it also the first one here and first one here. That's fine. But then we see some, you know, something strange. Uh, we see that the second output was from our observable. But if we have a look inside this method, um, this observable is the latest operation in this list. Yeah. And then again, something strange like promise, it goes uh, the third one inside our uh, console, but it is the fourth inside our uh, run async method. So everything completely mixed up. And this is because they are being run in different execution contexts. But still, it is not the answer for the question, what is execution context? And in order to figure out it, we have to dive a little bit into how browser handles async operations in JavaScript. So let's try to have a look at a couple of slides. Okay. Let's have a look at this mental model, which should be pretty familiar to all of you. It is our usual workflow, right? So we have a list of tasks for every day and we're going to execute them one by one because it would be hard to do multiple of these tasks at the same time. So imagine our first task is to check emails. It can be done immediately and synchronously. So we just open the mail application, read messages and done. The next task is to update documentation. It could be also easily done synchronously. We just go to the Confluence page, change something, whatever, and done again. Then we would need to merge our awesome feature into develop branch. Can we do it synchronously? Well, if you have a proper workflow, then not really, because your pull request should be accepted by some of your colleagues. And it usually takes some time, right? So what should we do in this case? Just stop our work and wait? No, 
In order to be more efficient, we will put this task into a queue or let's name it to do a sub list. And we will proceed then to another task, which is take away a parcel at 3 p.m. So here we cannot just sit and do nothing until 3 p.m. as well. So we schedule it also into a queue, but it will be another queue because it is something we have to do later. It is not something which is super urgent. Doing that, we are not blocking our working process, so we can take another task like update project to the latest Angular version, which could be also done synchronously, right? Okay, and now we do not have any tasks in progress, but we have some in our queues, and this is how we're going to resolve them. So first of all, we will try to resolve the task which needs to be done as soon as possible. So as soon as we get some feedback from our colleagues uh, when they approved our pull request, we have to pull the task merge feature branch into in progress section, then merge the branch obviously and it is done. And only then if we do not have any other tasks in progress and it is already 3 p.m. or later, we can go to pick up the parcel. Well, in the nutshell, the browser does pretty much the same, with the only difference that those tasks are functions, loops and other operations executed by the browser. And the execution contexts we were talking about are those queues and our in-progress section. The only difference is that they are named differently. The a sub to do list is called micro tasks queue and they could be scheduled by promises, mutation observer, etc. Then the to do later list is called macro task queue and those macro tasks could be scheduled by set timeout set interval, request animation frame, and so on and so forth. And finally, in progress section, it is our call stack where all functions are being eventually executed. Of course, it is a very simplified model of what is going on really under the hood. And I intentionally dropped things like web API, event loop, and so on, just to make it a little bit simpler. The main thing I wanted to highlight here are those cues. Now let's get back to the code. All right, so now we know that we have some micro tasks, we have macro tasks, and we have um, cues for them. So micro task queue, macro task queue. Okay, so I would suggest you to simplify this stuff a little bit. So I will leave only. Uh, promise set timeout and our stream and we will uh, mark it as um, set timeout. This is the macro task. The promise is micro task and our observable it is whatever task. Yeah, we don't know. We will be trying to run the stream in the different execution context. Yeah, because currently it's just synchronous and this is one of the things you have to know about streams uh, in RxJS, that they might be synchronous as well. There are, of course, many of them asynchronous, but uh, some of them, like off operator or from operator, they might be synchronous. But what if we want to run our synchronous observable asynchronously? and we want to control in which execution context should be emitted values in um, this stream. So if we want to do it, we have to uh, create a pipe, of course, and it has uh, one um, uh, operator, RxJS operator called observe on. And this operator, it takes scheduler, you can see it, right here and 
there are different types of these schedulers. And if we want to run it as a micro task, then we have to use scheduler called a sub. Here we go, a sub scheduler. And now if we try to save it, and then we run this method again, you can see that we run the promise first, then goes the stream value, and then we see the set timeout, which makes sense because it is also um, micro task again, yeah? Those are micro tasks and they executed in order, like in the queue, yeah, first in, first out. So first executes this promise because it's first in the stack and then uh, goes the uh, our uh, observable. And if we change the uh, direction, in this case will be uh, first stream, then promise, yeah, and then set timeout. Set timeout, this is a macro task. Macro task has uh, lower priority comparing to micro task. That's fine. Okay, what if we want to run our stream as a macro task. Oh, yeah, macro task, sorry. I always confusing macro, micro tasks. So in order to achieve it, we have to, oops, use a sync scheduler. Here we go. And a sync scheduler, it will run our observable as a micro, or sorry, macro task in this case, like it was set timeout. And if we save it and check it, you can see that promise has been executed first yeah, because uh, micro task has priority, then set timeout and then our stream. Again, the same thing because set timeout is a first in the stack, so it was executed the first, but those two are executed in the same execution context. And this is like, pretty much everything about the schedulers. This is what they're responsible for, yeah? And you can use them also in different uh, operators like delay, let's say. You can define the uh, delay in milliseconds, yeah, and then you have the scheduler. So you can provide also um, a sync scheduler, whatever, and that will be pretty much the same uh, result. So if I run, yeah, you can see that set timeout and stream value then after the set timeout. So this is the another way how you can use it. So if you see that operator takes some scheduler, yeah, then it means that you can control the execution context for uh, this stream. Okay, I hope it's pretty much clear so far. Now you would reasonably ask Metro, yeah, that's everything cool, but in real life, how I can use it? And the answer is, I have no clue, actually. Um, the thing is that you're using them always, schedulers, but under the hood. It's built in into the RxJS. You cannot use it without it. But cases when you explicitly have to deal with scheduler, I personally have never encountered such a use case or maybe I was too stupid back then and I could not recognize this use case, but during my career, I have never used this. Anyway, I tried to find some use cases which are uh, quite close to the real life. And in this video, I'm going to show you one. So what would I suggest you to implement right now? Let's implement some animation, some uh, loading indicator, yeah, somewhere here at the top. So it will be just uh, animation which fills 100% of the window width, and that's it. Yeah. So what, how are we going to implement it? First of all, I'm going to introduce a new property for the class called progress, and it's going to be observable of some number. Cool. And my TypeScript setup currently in strict mode. So TypeScript complains that I have to uh, initialize this property immediately, something like uh, that. But I don't want to do this. I will tell TypeScript with exclamation mark that, okay, TypeScript, don't worry, I will initialize it a little bit 
later somewhere in ng on any as example yeah and let's do it so what i'm going to assign to this uh, progress so we have to create animation yeah animation it's uh, just a sequence of uh, frames and these frames should be like emitted every 16 milliseconds so i need something like uh interval so interval it comes from um from RxJS, yeah, and it should happen every 16 milliseconds, so which is equal um, uh, 60 frames per second, yeah. So let's do one second divided to 60. Damn it, what's wrong with me? Okay, here will be 16 milliseconds, or not really 60, it will be 16 and 3, or something like that, but whatever. Then we have to use pipe, and because it is infinite observable, yeah, it will be emitting 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it will be emitting this forever. I don't want to do this. I would need only uh, 100 emissions. So I will use take operator, and I'm going to say that I need 100 emissions of here. Yeah. So, uh, now we have to create the div or whatever it is yeah, for our loader. And here I want to create a class first and class is going to be loader. We will add some styles a little bit, a little bit later to it. And then I want to also change the style property for my div and namely I will change the width for my uh, loader and here I define the unit I'm going to change. I'm going to change widths in percents. Yeah. So here I can use my progress and with a sync pipe I'm apply here. So it will emit one, two, three, four, five and the width will be changing every 16 milliseconds to 1%, 2%, 3%, 4% and, and so on and so forth. So that's great. Uh, let's uh, add some styles. So here we go. Very simple. And now if I save it, you can see here is my animation. But the thing is that interval under the hood uses the uh, a sync scheduler, which means that they will be using set timeout for this animation. And set timeout is not really a great choice for the animation because um, it has some problem. It, it, it was not designed for animations. Uh, this thing doesn't guarantee that the task will be executed exactly every 16 milliseconds. It means that it can happen that some frames are being dropped and the animation is not really smooth with it. In order to have smooth animation, we have to use request animation frame for this. And request, request animation frame allows you to perform some operation before browser ready to do painting. And it is designed exactly for animation. So we would like to animate uh, our loading bar not with this set timeout, but with uh, request animation frame and how we're gonna do it pretty simple actually so I will create the second uh, progress and here I don't need already define 16 millisecond I have to define zero right here but interval also takes the scheduler yeah and there is a special scheduler called animation frame scheduler and this animation frame scheduler forces uh, our stream to, um, to work as it, it was a uh, request animation frame, yeah? So with this simple change, we will make uh, our animation more smooth. And in order to see that it 
it is really uh, better and smoother than uh, with set timeout we have to compare it next to each other so i'm going to create another div and it's going to be progress 2 and it's going to be loader 2 as well and the uh, loader 2 i will make red yeah Ah, and I have to create appropriate property. Here we go. Now, if I save, do you see already the difference? I hope you are because, yeah, check this out. This green animation, which is uh, created by set timeout, it is not consistent. Yeah, it starts somewhere behind the red one and then closer to the end it like goes even forward when the red animation which is created with animation frame scheduler is oops is more consistent and it is i don't know if it's if video can convey it but it is really looks smoother way more smoother than the green one and this is like significant improvement uh for our animation which we achieved using the animation frame scheduler i don't know how often you will encounter this in real life because animations are handled by angular already whatever but maybe in some and other cases you could use schedulers in order to improve your streams if you know some interesting use cases please drop it in the comment sections for this video. All right, guys, that was it. I hope it was useful and you enjoyed this video. And if so, please share it with your colleagues and friends because it might be useful for them as well. And don't forget to check out my video courses. And by the way, this is the Black Friday week. So in video description, you will find discounts for all my video courses. I hope they will help you to become better Angular developer. So I wish you a productive week ahead, stay safe and see you in the future.